there, and welcome to episode 16 of the Branded by Amazing podcast. I'm Mike McClary, Chief Product Officer at Amazing.com, and today we're lucky to have one of the premier listing optimization experts, uh, one a good friend of mine as well, who's helped you know thousands of people improve their listings and get better sales conversions on Amazon. Uh, she's the owner and founder of Private Label Profit and has also spoken at many online events and in-person events, including SellerCon that we host here at Amazing. So I want to welcome Karen Thomas to the podcast. Hey, Karen, how you doing? Mike, I'm doing so good. It's so great to see you, my friend, and I'm so honored to be on your podcast. So thank you so much. It's always a great day when I get to talk with you. So thank you so much. Thank you as well. The feeling is mutual. It's kind of hopefully we can get together in, in, in person again sometime soon after the, the pandemic seems to be dying down again. But it's great to talk to you, see you, and kind of uh, it's a big time here uh, in the entire Amazon e-commerce marketplace. We're kind of heading into the fourth quarter. And uh, I know, like, again, you have some great ideas and you can always help people out with their listings. But one of the things I want to first ask you about is, like, you know, kind of give us a little bit of what you're doing now and, uh, you know, how you kind of got involved in this Amazon workspace business. Oh, Mike, it's an incredible story. I'm not going to lie. It's it's pretty much like a Cinderella story because, you know, I really have you to thank for it. And Matt and Jason, when, you know, he was one of the original founders of ASM. So I'm so excited to share my story because it's pretty exciting. You know, back in early 2014, uh, I took the ASM course with my ex-husband at the time. And, you know, we absolutely were blown away. We had taken, you know, so many different online courses and training just because we really both wanted to have you know our own business and we're very entrepreneurial but we know we just never saw success so maybe that's our own fault or maybe we just needed a really good um, learning system so that we could you know fall along and take it step by step and there was no missing pieces because I feel like you know in the past when we try to learn things there's always like we'd get to this like sticky point where we're like oh they're not explaining this and then we would just give up so we took ASM and we were just blown away. It was by far the most, in a lot of ways, like easy system because, you know, I had tried some pretty crazy things like network marketing and, you know, just things that were like excruciating, like trying to like beg people to like buy my stuff. So with this system of like literally finding a great product, sourcing it, making it unique, making it special, and then putting it on Amazon and then having people start buying it online without us having to, you know, twist people's arms. It was so exciting, so mind blowing for us. And it was incredible to see, you know, our business ramp up and meet so many amazing people. And then fast forward a couple of years later, I was at a mastermind actually in Austin. I don't think you were there for that one, Mike, but Matt was talking about, you know, he wanted to do a membership platform for different, you know, sub courses, just small niche topics. And you know, in our business, I thought my specialty was listing optimization because, you know, in the several product listings we had, we were getting incredibly high conversion rates. And, it, you know, from what I knew and talking with other people, it just wasn't normal to have that high of conversion. So I think you were talking about maybe your, your conversion rates were well above like what, 30, 35, 40 percent, something like that, right? Yeah. And on some of them, it was, you know, 75, 80 oh, wow. percent. So it was, crazy. It was yeah. really high. And so basically I was so honored and grateful to create a course and, you know, work with, you know, Matt had the great idea to work with, you know, five people just to test it and make sure that it wasn't just, you know, I was getting lucky or, you know, it was just my specific niche products. So we tested with five different case studies and they also saw a huge lift in conversion and sales as well. So, you know, I launched that course on your platform and it was so cool because kind of without planning it or, thinking ahead too much, which kind of is embarrassing on my end, it kind of launched my own mini agency because people watch the course, they liked it. And they're like, Hey, they reached out to me personally. You know, would you mind just writing my sales copy for me? You're obviously really good at it. And then, you know, kind of expanded to there to meet people's needs. Then they wanted images and video and A plus content and storefront design. So that's kind of where I've been the last few years. Yeah. So you, you took, ASM or Amazing Selling Machine, uh, you know, our, our flagship, you know, Amazon FBA private label training program had great success. 
uh, like you said, your your superpower, you may not even realize that was really writing compelling listings and getting incredible conversions. Like nowadays, if people are getting 15, 20%, that's good, but getting, you know, above 50, 70% crazy. And then I do remember back in 2016, we launched Seller Pro, which was our monthly subscription service, and we needed good content and came to you as the listing optimization expert. Now, I think to date, that's still one of the most popular and uh, well-respected courses in the entire Seller Pro uh, system, as a matter of fact. So good job creating that. That's, that's an awesome job. Thank you so much. And then I also remember you spoke at uh, our events as well. I can remember you being on stage and doing a little dance. You taught me a little dance, as a matter of fact, while you were up there. Uh, and what was your topic, optimization as well? It was. Mike, that was such just an incredible moment for me because I always wanted to be on stage speaking, but I was just so terrified to do it. It was just like such a big moment. And then it was just so exhilarating. It was so much fun. I loved it. And I'm so grateful. Like I said, I have you to thank for it and amazing because it's just been such an incredibly exciting experience the last seven years of my life. And, you know, I, I'm just so honored. Well, that, that's awesome. You've helped so many people. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, I feel like, you know, a lot of people understand the basics of building an Amazon FBA business, but they don't always merely hit the mark on certain things. I mean, you know, you gotta have a good product. We know that. Uh, if you don't, nothing else you do will really help. But after having a good product, is just as important as having a really compelling listing on Amazon. So for those of you uh, listening right now, you know we call the product on Amazon the product detail page or the Amazon listing. It's basically the thing that has the title, the price, the images, everything like that. Uh, it may seem simple to go out there and just throw some basic information about your product out there, but it's critical to treat it like it's a mini website or business in order to really create a great listing. And so Karen, uh, you've probably, I don't know, helped hundreds if not thousands of people through your course, through actually working with them and, and optimizing their listings. So I wanted to have you on Karen to talk about, first let's talk about what are some of the biggest, I guess, misses or problems you see with the listings you've seen? Yeah, I'll take this in two folds if you don't mind. So I think, you know, the obvious would be, you know, people, that have a really great product, but you know, it's, and I understand I, as being a seller myself, I understand it's, it's an investment to really create a good, great product to have inventory in stock. And so sometimes, you know, then it's like, Oh, but then to have good content created, it's kind of the next investment. And it's kind of scary. It's like, I don't know if I'm ready to invest because, you know, I just invested in my inventory. So I understand that, but it's tough because if you don't, you're really shooting yourself in the foot because, you know, here in 2021, people want really good quality. They want to feel like they're buying from trusted brands. And so it's really tough to compete if you haven't put in the effort and the just the quality in your content. So obviously that's that's the basic number one, having really good quality images, sales copy, um, hopefully video if that's available to you. And then kind of the stage from there, I want to share if that's okay, Mike, just yeah, a quick... Yeah case Absolutely. study where I think, you know, a lot of people right now, I think it's talked about a lot to have really good quality creative. But then on top of that, I think a lot of people don't always know what to do with that or how to use that creative. And I actually, you know, worked with someone a few weeks ago who, you know, he was a very successful seller. He's just this one product was an eight figure product a year product. It was, you know, expensive. He's selling it for about $190. And he started losing traction in his organic ranking, he was losing sales. And, you know, he asked me, you know, what's the problem here? And I looked at his listing and, you know, right off the bat, it was gorgeous, amazing content. Like he told me he spent $8,000 on new images and someone wrote their sales copy and video. And it was really, really good. You could tell this was like deluxe. He invested in it. So the next problem is how to use it, right? And what I have found, and this is kind of my secret sauce, is selling the why. Because a lot of times we think, you know, the best thing is just to list everything, list all the cool features, list all of the amazing things about it and what makes it special. And that is important. But what I found is that people buy based off of emotion. And so if you're not really selling those, hitting those big points of why someone wants to buy it and also answering those big concerns that they may have, then people are going to hesitate, right? Then be like, oh, this looks like a good product. It's a good price, but is it really going to give me what I want? And so I told him, I said, you know, 
I say just right off the bat, a few quick things that you're not answering in your images, you're not answering in your sales copy. And the thing is, and I'm one of those people that just has a very short attention span. And so you don't wanna make people dig too hard to find those answers, right? So basically how I do this is kind of looking at questions. And if this is like a newer listing, then I look at the top selling competitors and looking at what people are asking looking what people are complaining about in the, you know, one, two star reviews and figuring out, okay, now how can we address this? How can we solve this? Is it better information? In this case, he had some, you know, one and two star review problems that he had fixed, but he didn't mention that. So I said, okay, right on image number two, let's say new and improved design and what the issue that they fixed. And the bullet point, or excuse me, and then in image three, let's talk about why someone wants to buy this. What's the main result? And this was an exercise product and it was a great product. And for me, it was obvious because I'm their target demographic. So I said, we need to address, you know, they're going to burn 300 calories in 30 minutes using this product. So it's a no brainer, but people want that just so clear, so obvious to them, even though as a seller, you may think, well, this is obvious. Of course, they're going to burn calories. Of course, they're going to whatever, but just making it obvious and clear. Again, people just feel like, oh, they're answering my question. I'm in the right place. It's exactly why I want it. And they don't have to think so hard, right? And then if you have, you know, some good features to kind of justify that with logic, then it's going to really help cement that easy buying decision. So they're not confused. They're not thinking, oh, you know, anytime people are hesitating and they're thinking too hard, that's when you've lost them. So if you can answer those questions really quick, in your images and i also say mirror those in your bullet points really quickly so i did the same thing new and improved design x y and z fastest way or an easy way to burn 300 calories in the next bullet point etc so that it's really easy pe for people to scan it and quickly see okay they're getting they're going to give me what i want with this product and it's so crazy mike because literally just making those adjustments he didn't get new images he didn't do anything crazy, literally just making the adjustment to his infographics, to adding that. He went from going, you know, 26 sales a day all the way up to 80 sales a day within the course of the last three weeks. So it's a, it makes a huge improvement in your sales and conversion if you can really sell the why of your product. Now, that, that's incredible. And you mentioned something earlier that I don't know if everyone quite understands what that means. You said mirror the images and the bullet points. Can you go a little deeper into exactly what that is? Yeah, so most listings have, you know, five or six bullet points that they can have. And, you know, a lot of times people just keep those really short and basic, like imported from China or made from organic cotton or just really basic features, right? However, I recommend to use that space, right? Use, I usually like to have those bullet points between like 200 to 400 characters. And right in the beginning of the, the bullet point just really address that main point. So like I said, in this particular example was new and improved design with um, X, Y, Z. And I forgot what the improvement was, but so in that first bullet point, if I have that, then in the, obviously the first image is gonna be your hero, hero image on a white background. But the second image is I wanna mirror what I said in the first bullet point. So if I said new and improved design that I'm gonna have you know, maybe a beautiful lifestyle image with someone using the product. And then I'm going to say new and improved design X, Y, Z with what the improvement was. And then the second pull point, if I say, um, you know, burn 500 calories in an hour or whatever, this was okay. Burn 200 to 300 calories in a half hour. And I said it more clever than that, but then in the next image on the third image that I'm going to say, uh, burn 300 calories in 30 minutes. And then in the third bullet point, if I say something like, um, it makes a gift, a great gift idea, then I wanna say something about that in the fourth image. So that way I'm just kind of going back and forth so that they can quickly scan. And a lot of people don't like to read too much of the bullet points, so they'll read maybe the first sentence. So that's where you wanna say again what you wanna really cement in their mind of what they're gonna get and why they should buy it. Now that's great. I, I guess some people are, some people are more visual. Some people are more, they like to read. And I guess by mirroring those, you're kind of covering both of those different targets. Yeah, exactly right. Now, when you mentioned at the beginning um, of the bullet points, you want to like, I guess that's kind of like your attention grabbing, yeah. like a few words there, kind of like you said, like burn 300 cal calories 
in minutes. And then you go on to describe that in a little more detail afterwards. Exactly right. Like I like to think of it basically like writing, if you were writing an, uh, like a newspaper ad or an email campaign, like you want that first sentence to be your headline that's going to grab attention. And then, you know, in the next two to three sentences, talk about how it does that. You know, instead of leading with, it has, you know, all the bells and whistles and you talk, a lot of people start with all the features, right? It has 10 different functions and 30 different speeds and you know what I mean? And that's cool. But if you don't hit the why first, then people just, it glazes right over them and they're not going to pay attention to those small details. But if you grab their attention first with a great catching headline with the first sentence of your bullet point, and then talk about, you know, we've added 20 new features with the, 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 then you can talk about that, but make sure you hit the really compelling, eye catching, easy to read headline first in that first sentence. That's great advice. You know, um, there's also been some, I guess, announcements from Amazon over the year. They have to do all the time. Like, uh, they're, they don't want all caps anymore at the beginning. They also don't want emojis. Are you still seeing that? Like, as, as, have they started suppressing listings because of that? Or are you still seeing good results by doing both of those or either one of those things? That's an excellent question, Mike. Yeah, I was doing that for a while just to kind of push the boundaries because I didn't see as much uh, punishment, I guess. <laughs> I can't think of a better word for that. However, I have stopped doing that because I don't think even if you don't get suppressed, I do think it is kind of messing with the algorithm a bit. So I recommend just keeping it and just capitalizing the first letter of the first, capitalizing the first letter of each word in that first sentence of the bullet point, and then just putting it in brackets. So it kind of helps it stand out without being in all caps, without having emoji. And then you kind of get around that by still keeping Amazon's, you know, TOS and also getting a little bit more attention to that first sentence. That's, that's great advice. Yeah, because we're kind of seeing that around uh, all over the place as well. Some people are noticing that their rankings are dropping when they have that in there. And who knows when Amazon's going to go through and update everyone, but eventually they do. Uh, what about as far as HTML? Um, so so there's two kinds of content down below the fold, I guess I'll call it, in the, in the description. If you don't have A-plus content, and you know a lot of people who aren't brand registered don't have that yet, they still have to write text. You don't want to have something boring. Are you still seeing people being able to use like basic HTML, like with line breaks and bullets there? Uh, or is that kind of going out the window as well? Yeah, that's also gone out the window as well. So the only thing I do is line breaks and that kind of breaks up the text a bit. But yeah, I haven't done anything else as far as all caps or bolded or, you know, some of those tricks that were powerful the last you know seven years i've been in the game i don't do that anymore just line breaks and i'm assuming um your thoughts on a plus content if you can afford it definitely do it yeah absolutely and what's really cool is you know if you do have brand registry you can test it because in some cases i have seen that it does work better just having product description and i can't explain it because you know even amazon themselves says that if you do have a plus content, it tends to give you a lift in conversion and sales. And I do see that generally speaking, but I like that they have this new feature manage experiments. If you are brand registered that you can test it. So you could have, you know, an A plus content design and then verse just a simple product description, just the text to see how it does. Um, you can kind of see week by week what the difference is. They'll give, you know, several traffic to your A plus content and some traffic to just the other experiment, which if, in this case, if it's just the product description text and you can see what performs better. And I like, for me, I think it's really good to test things so that you know. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of times I would say nine out of 10, the A plus content is gonna perform better, but it's good to test it. If you're the, you know, that one person out of 10 that does better with just product description, then that's good to know. No, that, that's great. So there's, I know you can, you can test A plus content now. That's good. I, I heard of that recently. I think titles you can test. Is there, any, do they do images or pricing yet on there that you can test or just those two? Yeah. And now they also have the main image that you can test, which again, I think is so powerful because that's such a huge, huge, huge part of someone clicking on your listing. So I really recommend testing that. Um, personally for me, I recommend kind of doing some crowdsourcing or using like PicFu to test several images because then you can get really fast results and then kind of take those top two 
best main images that people voted on and then test them on Amazon because it does take four weeks to kind of get a good idea of what worked better. So it's longer, but you get a real result of actual people, actual real customers testing it versus, you know, pick food. They're not necessarily real customers in your target demographic all the time. So that's where I think it's really powerful to use both in that way. Awesome. Uh, that's great, like great advice for anyone looking to optimize their listings. Thank you so much for that. Uh, what I wanted to focus on next, and uh, right now it's September the 22nd. Uh, so we'll be heading, this This podcast will probably be released sometime here in a few weeks, but we'll be heading into the fourth quarter, um, you know, in general, maybe 40 to 50% of companies' sales sometimes come during the holiday season. And so one of the topics I want to ask you was, what can people do to prepare their listings or is there anything people can do to prepare their listings for the holiday sales? Do you have any advice for our listeners for that? Excellent question, Mike. Yes. I, and I, I say this very passionately because I would say, I mean, I don't know the percentage. I'm totally just guessing here, but I do think it's a big percentage. I would say, you know, 60% of people, if not more, do their holiday shopping on Amazon. It's just becoming more and more popular, especially with what's been going on in the world the last couple of years. And so really think about that and really find, first of all, find great keywords that you can use in your listing that target specific niches. So what I mean by that is looking for keywords like uh, Christmas gift for her or Christmas gift for 10 year old or whatever, just tr- really trying to find specific niche target demographics that you can target for gifts specifically, because that's going to really help you rank for those. And then also just making sure that your listing is, is featured and centered around the holiday season. So what I mean by that is having, you know, really good images that show, you know, more of a Christmas theme. So you could talk or you could have, you know, a lot of sites like, um, I'm trying to think, I, my mind is like, what's that stock image site? Oh, like Shutterstock is one of them that could do it. Thank you. Shutterstock has really good like templates. If you just do, um, like a Christmas theme or stuff like that, that's really good. If you have kind of the background as a Christmas theme, and then you have, you know, your product or you have a lifestyle image in that theme that looks really good, or even just having like a little bow with something that makes an amazing Christmas gift. And then also having that, like we talked about before, having that mirrored in your bullet points and saying, you know, right at the beginning of, let's say bullet point two or three makes a great holiday gift. And here's why. Because again, it just helps people get in mind, okay, I'm in the right place. I know it seems obvious, but it's not obvious. You really have to be extremely clear and the more clear you are, the better. So really talk about it, especially if you have a really beautiful packaged box that's gonna look beautiful when they open it, or if it's a good size, maybe as a stocking stuffer, or maybe you wanna talk about buy it for your holiday uh, gift exchange or makes a great white elephant gift or whatever the case may be, but make sure you're thinking about that. Do the keyword research and find some good low hanging fruit, some, some kind of more niche specific keywords. So that means they're not going to be, you know, a hundred thousand searches. Maybe it's, you know, a thousand or 1500 people searching that, that keyword. It's not a ton, but it may not be as competitive. So you can really get some traction on that. So what would you do with those keywords, Karen? Um, would you put them in your title, your bullets, the back end search terms, uh, or you just kind of got to make a decision based on what it is? Yes, I would definitely have it in your bullet points and then in your back end search terms. And then if you do have brand registry, I recommend to test it in your title because it's, it is a big selling season. So it's tough to, you know, really just make a big test without having some data behind it. So if you can, I would recommend testing both versions, but if you can put it near the beginning of the title, it's going to give you a lot more SEO ranking juice. So that would be my suggestion. If you're just starting out and you don't have a ton of data behind your title, then you, in my mind, you have a lot more flexibility to, you know, make changes and test it. But if you have a lot more history, then I would say test it if you have brand registry. No, that, that's, that's great advice. And, and on your image uh, ideas, those are great as well. We've been doing those. We, we like putting like a little bow around our packaging. So we definitely show our packaging Christmas, just like you mentioned. And we sometimes even put a little bitty Santa's cap on some of our products too, just to make it stand out there. So all great advice. I love that. That's brilliant. 
Well, so um, these are, this has all been great advice. You know, the general stuff you've you've told us about how to optimize listings. Also, the specific advice on your images, your searches for the holiday season. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, I also want to like give you a chance to let people know how they can contact you because you are. I mean, you do this for a living. You help people optimize their listings. What's the best way for people to reach out to you? Oh, thank you so much for asking that, Mike. So they can reach me personally um, by email at karen at privatelabelprofit.com or um, I'm on Facebook. Karen Meredith Thomas is my name and or just reach out on my website, Private Label Profit. And yeah, I would love to talk with you and see how I can help. Awesome. Thanks so much, Karen. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, Again, this was episode 16, talking with Karen Thomas, owner and founder of Private Label Profit, speaker at Celicon and lots of other amazing events. Uh, So take care and hope to see everyone again real soon. Thank you.